talking with Claude from Diva Fiji Pearls, who's been in uh, Fiji for the last 10 years, developing a pearl farm in a beautiful environment, but one that's very challenging at the same time. So Claude, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Yeah. Firstly, um, how did you and Danielle uh, end up in Fiji making pearls? Um. I studied in biology because I always had a fine um, fascination with the sea. Um, but when I saw I couldn't get a job, I uh, switched to business school. And then I met Danielle and we started an advertisement agency. But all the time we were working in advertisement and in graphic design, the longing to, for the sea was always there. And at one point we got fed up with the rat race and we sold all, we sold all our assets. And um, we, uh, we bought a sailboat and went sailing around the world. And during our travels, we, uh, we made the big step of crossing the Panama Canal. Uh, and we ended up in the South Pacific. And as we were traveling the South Pacific, we arrived on a group of islands 1,000 nautical miles south of Tahiti, who is the capital of the production of the Tahitian black pearls. It's the Gambia group of islands. And uh, on that island, we stayed for a few months. And we met a guy. Who, uh, who became a dear friend of ours. And uh, he showed us around what was the industry, how it was working. And during our travels, Danielle and I figured out that we wouldn't go back to Canada to work again there because of the snow or the rat race conditions. So uh, we wanted to do something different. At the same time, there in French Polynesia, it was almost impossible to do business there because there was already over 400 farms already established, strong French competition. It was... Uh, was pretty hard and uh, challenging environment. So we forgot about that and we continued sailing around uh, the South Pacific until we stumbled on Fiji. And the port of entry to Fiji is Savu Savu. And at the time, that was in 2009, no, 2008, uh, when we arrived in Savu Savu, there was a, an American farm there producing quite a good number of pearls and really, really, really colorful pearls. And these are pearls colors that we never saw anywhere else in the world. And we were completely fascinated by that. And uh, from there, the idea solely seeped in that we could do it in Fiji. At the time, there was only a few farms. Uh, and Fiji offered a lot of great opportunities at the time to do business. Um, so that's how we went, ended up here in 2009. Can you explain a bit about the process of making pearls? Um, pearl is a bit like wine. It takes a time. It takes a lot of time. There's a few steps in the process because uh, like wine, you have to deal with a vine, then the raisin, then the wine. It's the same for pearls. Uh, first of all, um, I always say that it's farming. It's like cattle farming. It's like strawberries. It's a lot of work. It's not hard work, but it's a lot of work. Um, it's not difficult. It's just a lot of elbow grease. So we need, first, at all, first we need oysters to start with. And there's different ways to get them. You can pick them up from the wild. You can get them on spat collectors. Or you can get them, can get them from hatcheries. Uh, in our case, we do it from spat collectors. Uh, it takes us a year and a half to get them. We simply catch them wild larvae, free swimmingly in the water column. They attach to collectors. We grow them until they get a year and a half. We harvest them, then we nurse them in cages for another year, year and a half. So three years in the process, we have oysters that are mature, ready to make a pearl. And then we fly in a technician from Japan, so we're gonna seed the oysters. Uh, we do this twice a year, in April and October. 
the reason why we do it twice a year is because there's um, two seasons in Fiji, the hot season and the cold season. And between those two seasons, the temperature of the water swings and during the swing of temperature, our oysters spawn their eggs, and it's much easier for us to see inside what's happening when they have no eggs inside. So we do that in October and April. Um, once we seed the oysters, um, we have to wash them, clean them every three months. So it's a long process of cleaning, nursing, uh, disease monitoring. Um, and we fly in the technician again 18 months later for, to do the harvest. We could do the harvest ourselves, but we'd rather have the uh, technician from Japan to do it for us, simply because we're gonna reuse the oyster to make another pearl. So at the same time, we can start a new process and make a bigger pearl. And we can do that process two or three times. So, and then there's a process of value adding and selling and marketing. So there's a, there's a bit of work in the, in the whole process. So. It's not as easy as uh, just jumping in the water, finding an oyster and uh, discovering a pearl. That's good for the movies, but in reality, that's not how it is. Mm -hmm.